March 2006, Banks Island, Canadian Arctic, minus 58 degrees Fahrenheit. A scientist looks out the window of the research station and sees something that shouldn't exist. On the sea ice, almost a mile and a quarter away, dark spots are moving in a circle. He grabs the binoculars. What he sees makes him question everything he learned about the Arctic food chain. In the center of the circle, something large is lying in the snow. Around it, the dark spots approach, retreat, coordinated like ghosts. The scientist adjusts the focus. And then he realizes, that mass in the center has white fur, white fur stained with red, a polar bear, a polar bear being hunted. But polar bears are the supreme predators of the Arctic. They have no natural predators. Nothing dares to hunt them, except those shadows around the body. What the hell is happening there? Before revealing what the scientists saw that frozen day, you need to understand something fundamental about the Arctic. There's an unbreakable hierarchy in that desert of ice. And at the absolute top of that pyramid, reigning alone, is the polar bear. Adults can weigh over 1250 pounds. Sharp claws. Jaws capable of crushing a seal's skull with a single movement. They're perfect hunting machines shaped by millions of years of evolution to dominate one of the planet's most hostile environments. There are no predators of polar bears. Full stop. That's basic biology. That's what all the books say. That's what scientists believed. Until that day in March 2006. But here's the problem. Nature doesn't read books. And in the Arctic, where survival is measured in calories and opportunities, the rules can be rewritten. So what was hunting that polar bear? The scientist kept watching. The dark shadows continued their methodical work. And when he finally identified what they were, he had to check three times to be sure. Because what he was seeing simply didn't make sense. Let's think logically. What could hunt a polar bear in the Arctic? The options are extremely limited. Another polar bear? Yes, adult males are sometimes cannibalistic, but the predation pattern the scientists observed was different. Grizzly bears? They can venture north, but not onto sea ice. Not that far from shore. And definitely not in March, when the Arctic is at the peak of winter. Wolverines? Aggressive, yes. Brave, without a doubt. But solitary and too small to take down a polar bear. The shadows the scientist was watching moved in formation. Four, maybe five individuals. Working together. Surrounding. Attacking in shifts. Tiring the prey. This is elite hunting behavior. Very few animals on the planet hunt with this sophistication. And here's the detail that makes everything even more bizarre. This was happening on sea ice. Not on the tundra not in the forest, on the sea, ice, a mile and a quarter from shore, in that brutal environment where each step can mean the difference between life and death, where temperatures can kill in minutes, a group of predators had just done the impossible. They had hunted the animal that shouldn't have predators. The scientist, Richardson, knew he was witnessing something extraordinary. He began documenting everything. Photographs, notes, exact coordinates. Because what he was seeing had probably never been scientifically recorded before. The predators, they weren't in a hurry. They knew exactly what they were doing. Decades of evolution. Generations of knowledge passed between them. And there, on that infinite ice, they were rewriting the rules of the Arctic food chain. But who were they? Before I reveal the identity of this impossible predator, if you're enjoying this Arctic mystery, subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell. Because what comes next will completely change your perception of who really rules the top of the world. Wolves. That's right. The predators that hunted and killed that polar bear were wolves. And yes, I know what you're thinking. 
Wolves don't hunt polar bears. That's impossible. Except that Richardson and his colleague Andreashek had just witnessed exactly that. And when they published their findings in the scientific journal Arctic in 2006, the scientific community was shocked. Because you see, wolves and polar bears rarely encounter each other. Their territories overlap only in very specific areas of the high Canadian Arctic. And even when they cross paths, conventional wisdom said that wolves would simply avoid the bears. Basic self-preservation. But these wolves, they didn't read the manual. Now here comes the crucial detail that makes the story even more surprising. The polar bear that was hunted was a cub, not a 1300 pound adult. But even so, think about what this means. A polar bear cub is usually protected by an adult bear. In other words, it's very dangerous predation. And these wolves faced that risk and won. So how is this possible? How does a group of animals that weigh on average 100 pounds each manage to face an adult female bear to hunt her cub? How did they manage to prey on the cub of a predator genetically programmed to be the king of the Arctic? The answer lies in three critical factors. First, numbers and coordination. Wolves live and hunt in packs of seven to ten individuals. They have a complex social hierarchy led by an alpha pair, and each member of the group has a specific role during the hunt. When they hunt together, they're devastatingly efficient. One wolf distracts. Another attacks from the side. A third goes to the rear. It's a biological war machine. Second, opportunity and vulnerability. The cub observed was separated from its mother. And this is absolutely critical. An adult polar bear? Untouchable. No wolf, no pack would be crazy enough to attack an adult. But a cub alone? That completely changes the equation. Especially if that cub is in a transition area where ice meets land and the wolves know every inch of the terrain. The mother polar bear was distracted by part of the wolves and in those minutes of separation, Another part of the wolves saw their window of opportunity and seized it with surgical precision. Third, and perhaps most important, necessity. The Arctic doesn't forgive. Food is scarce. The traditional prey of wolves, hares, caribou, musk oxen aren't always available. And when you're facing starvation in an environment where temperatures reach minus 58 degrees, where every calorie counts for survival, you get creative. Or you die. And a polar bear cub? That represents weeks of calories. Pure fat. Concentrated energy. For a desperate wolf pack, it's worth the risk. But here's what makes this story even more fascinating. This wasn't an isolated incident. Since the publication of Richardson's study in 2006, other reports have begun to emerge. Indigenous communities in the Canadian Arctic who have lived in that region for generations confirm that they occasionally witness wolves pursuing polar bear cubs, especially during late July when bears are leaving the sea ice toward land. In 2015, there was another documented sighting near Hudson Bay. Again, wolves. Again, a polar bear cub. And again, experts emphasize that this is rare, but it happens. What does this tell us? That in some remote regions of the high Arctic, where these two species coexist, some wolves are learning. They're developing strategies. They're passing this knowledge to the next generations. It's behavioral evolution happening in real time. It's not common behavior. It probably never will be. But the fact that it happens the fact that it's possible completely breaks our rigid understanding of Arctic hierarchy. Now, there's a darker side to all this. And it's important to talk about it. Climate change is drastically altering the Arctic. Sea ice is melting earlier and forming later. This forces polar bears to spend more time on land, where their cubs are more vulnerable. At the same time, the traditional prey of wolves are changing their migration patterns. This means more encounters. 
more territorial overlap, more opportunities for these rare predation events. We're not talking about wolves replacing polar bears at the top of the food chain. That will never happen. But we are talking about an ecosystem and transformation where the old rules are being rewritten by environmental pressure. And that should concern us. Not because wolves are hunting bears, but because this behavioral change is a symptom of something much bigger happening in the Arctic. But what that event proved goes far beyond a single predation. It proved that nature is much more fluid, much more adaptable, and much more surprising than our textbooks suggest. In the Arctic, where life was already difficult, now it's becoming even more unpredictable. And predators that would never before dare to challenge the king of ice are now learning that, under the right circumstances, even the impossible can become possible. If you made it this far, thank you so much for watching. Subscribe to the channel, leave a like, and I left an incredible video right here that I'm sure you'll love. See you next time.